Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be how to understand the female mind. I've got two really good email success stories. And actually, both of these guys are former coaching clients of mine. One of my coached late last year, and the other one early this year. And they've got two really good success stories. One guy had lost his really hot Russian alpha female girlfriend. Obviously, I helped her get her back. Things are better than ever, and he describes that and the process. And the second guy was actually in a relationship with a pretty toxic woman that wasn't good for him. And I just pointed out all the flaws and the reason why he was having problems with her. And obviously now he's very happy in his new relationship. They got a baby on the way and pretty, pretty two really good success stories from guys that are obviously in the 3% club. Ah, the nectar of the 3% club, two new members. So I've got uh, a quote that I wrote, and then we'll go through the first guy's email. So the quote says, Women respect and love men who stand up to them and who respect and love themselves. A woman has to know that if they push a guy too far and violate his boundaries and principles, that he will walk and never look back. A man who doesn't have the confidence to stand up to a disrespectful woman gets no love or respect from her. In order for a woman to submit to a man and follow his lead, he must demonstrate through his actions that he can handle himself, her, and any other challenges life throws his way. A real man rises up to meet challenges. A beta male shrinks from them. So with that quote in mind, let's go to the first guy's email. He says, hey, Corey, greetings and hope you continue to be crazy successful. We spoke in December of 2019 and the advice you provided that day and have provided through your work has been spot on. Well, you may have heard me say that I might not always be right, but I'm never wrong. cocky bastard. At the time, the woman I was dating had broken up with me for the second time. She is a highly educated and beautiful Russian woman, so I knew I had a challenge on my hands. Yeah, Russian women tend to be very feminine, very strong-willed, and they don't like weak-ass men. They're disgusted and repulsed by them. I had a lot of them as my neighbors down in South Beach, and they don't they don't put up with beta males at all. They are repulsed by them. They're disgusted by them. It's just a fact of life. Yet, following your advice, I approached each breakup with the calmness and sense of abundance that any alpha male would be proud of. Also, following your advice, I used the no contact rules when she finally contacted me on Thanksgiving to wish me a good holiday. I assumed that it was her way of asking to see me. So I made a date, which as predictable was delayed. So this is interesting. It brings up, I talk about this a lot. If you're trying to get somebody back, an ex back, or somebody that's pushed you away or said, I need space, there's no spark, there's no chemistry, something's missing, and they're trying to put you in friend zone or offer you terms that you're not into, and then they start coming back to you and they start contacting you, they must come to you. They must come to your house to make dinner together. You're not going to go to lunch or meet him for a coffee date or pick him up or take him somewhere or meet him out anywhere. It's You're happy to see them, but the only distance that you're going to be willing to travel to see them is the distance that it takes to go from wherever you are in your house to your front door to let them in. Because this is important to reestablishing the power dynamic and the dominance dynamic. Because if she left you for displaying weakness or acting like a beta male, if you will, then when she comes back, because she's starting to sense that this guy's not coming after me. And that's where it's like, so no contact is not, a lot of guys make the mistake and think, oh, it's a tactic. It's not a tactic. It's a way of living. It's a negotiation. If you're in a negotiation and you're sitting at the negotiating table and the other party to your negotiation is unwilling to give you the terms that you want and you're at an impasse, 
the only thing you can do is walk away because if you stay there and you try to get them to give you the terms you want and they're unwilling to do that and then you start caving, you're giving up your position of leverage. And that means you don't really believe in what you're bringing to the table. You don't see that what you're bringing to the table has enough value to stand firm on your principles and what you want. So a guy who loves and values and respects himself, after a woman has pushed him away, it's like, hey, she screwed the relationship up. And it's got to be her that's going to fix it. That's why when in these situations, the woman has to do all the calling, texting, and pursuing. And as long as she comes over for three dates in a row in the evening, making dinner at your place to hang out and have fun and hook up, then you can meet her out and pick her up and do those things. But she still has to continue to do all the pursuing because her coming back has to be her idea. If you start calling and texting and pursuing her as she's starting to come back, it'll backslide. She'll start backing off a little bit. And a lot of guys make this mistake. The woman starts coming back and like, hey, great. No contact worked. And then they go right back to pursuing. And then within a few weeks, they're stuck in friend zone again. They're getting ghosted. They're getting blown off. They're getting broken dates. They're getting jerked around. Because the woman has to know, she has to sense, she has to feel that there's a hard boundary there. And if she treats you the way you say you don't want to be treated and she offers you terms that you aren't interested in, you have to walk and never look back. And it's you, the way you do that, you say, hey, if you change your mind, get in touch. I'd, I'd love to see you. I'd love to work things out, whatever it happens to be. And if there's still interest, enough romantic interest, she'll come back at some point. And if there's not, you'll never hear from her again. And either way, you know where you stand. Because you want somebody that wants to be with you. You want somebody that values you enough to say, I'm not letting this guy get away. Uh, you know, She's going to make the effort to make it known that she likes you and wants you. Because women have to know where the boundary is. they got to know at some point in every relationship and every dating in the beginning, at some point, something comes up and the guy, she has to sense, she has to feel, she has to know. Sometimes she's got to experience that the guy is out of there and he's walking away and he's never coming back. And as the days go by and if she cares about him, her interest is going to start to creep back up. And then she's going to start to become fearful that, wow, I really pissed this guy off. I really screwed this up. I better fix this because it's obvious that I'm not going to hear from him again because she stepped across his boundary. She found what his breaking point was. She found the straw that broke the camel's back. She found the PNR, the point of no return meaning the only way the guy is going to return is if she does something to get his attention and comes over and does things on his terms because if she starts coming back and then you start going to her you're now submitting and going to her terms if she really cares about you she'll come to you and if she doesn't want to do that then you're just simply not going to make time for her it's really super important how you handle it guys that follow what i teach in seven principles get an expect works really well Guys that follow it, and then once the girl starts reaching out, they start reaching out again. What happens? They go right back to over-pursuing, and then it becomes a stalemate, and then they get nowhere. It's got to be her idea. Men may do the choosing, but it's women who pick the guys they want to be with. So be the kind of guy that she has to pick, the kind of guy that she has to work for, the kind of guy that's just simply not going to put up with her fucking bullshit. Simple as that. I'm not going to put up with being mistreated this way. I'm not going to put up with being taken for granted. I'm not going to put up with your uncertainty about where our relationship is right now. I'm not going to put up with you being unsure about how you feel about me. You go figure that shit out and get back to me. That's the attitude. You're just saying, no, nah, this doesn't excite me. This, these terms don't work for me. I'm leaving the negotiating table. You're not saying you're leaving the negotiating table. Your actions are going to communicate that because you're going to disappear from her life. She's never going to hear from you again. You're not going to call. You're not going to text. You're not going to interact with her social media or anything. As far as you're concerned, she's dead to you and you're moving on because you just like the Lionel Richie song, Easy. I love that song. I was looking for a good time. And he moves on. It's like such a great song. I love the words of that song too. So, you know, obviously it's a Lionel Richie song from the 80s, one of his big hits. Check it out. Check the words of that song out. Easy by Lionel Richie. 
Love that song. So applies to this kind of a situation where he's like, he's had enough of a toxic relationship. He's like, I'm out of here. I'm looking for a good time. I want to have fun. I'm back out in the town. I'm back out in the streets looking for a new girl. Looking to have a good time. No more of this garbage from the past. Love it. So back to our first emailer. So the date that he made got delayed. Now, the point being of going, you know, going through the seven principles, getting next back a little bit, is notice what happens next. This is really super important that you do this properly because if you don't, you're going to screw it up. He says, her next contact was to ask me to go to her. Sound familiar, he says with a question mark. But he was prepared because he was a good student and obviously he had a great coach and moi, yours truly, teaching him how to master what's in 3%. Man, so we can join the 3% club. So he says, well, I stuck to the principles of attraction and declined. No, thank you. The only way we would get together is if she came to me. You're the man. This is your fucking kingdom. You don't see the king running outside of his castle with his, his golden crown on and his big flowing cape chasing after the chick that's that's leaving his castle. He's like, Pfft. he lets her leave. He's like, you'll be back. She'll be back eventually. Once she realizes I ain't coming after her, he's like, she'll be back. And if, if not, uh, you know, when one door closes, another one opens. There's always a better opportunity down the road you have to believe that you have to think that way and you have to act that way and you have to ex have expectations positive expectations that that eventually with enough time it's going to happen because it's not worth going back because if you go back and you cave and you go back to the negotiating table you lose all your leverage and when you lose all your leverage now you're going along with her terms and at the end of the day women don't want power they don't want control in their relationship despite what they say they don't react too well to it they don't like it, especially a russian alpha female she won't put up with that shit one of the things i always used to love when i would run into russian women because there's a lot of them down in south beach we, we start inevitably at some point start talking about politics and i'd always ask them, what do you guys think of vladimir putin 100 percent of them they all said the same fucking thing he's a really strong man Whatever you think of Vladimir Putin, he's a fucking man. He's an alpha male. And women respect strong men. Men that just won't put up a bullshit. So she agreed after he said, you know, he's not going to hurt. She agreed and drove 30 minutes to meet me. After dinner, we made love and have not separated since. You see how that was right on the right in the barrier of just losing it if he'd agreed to her and gone to her he's given the power away it's possible he might have been able to fumble his way through it for a few weeks and it worked but on some level it's like she had to come to him she had to come to daddy who's your daddy baby so she came back he says, we are now living together and still feeling the love for almost a year. Now, there's a great compliment she pays him. This morning, she told me I have high emotional intelligence. It's something she says she has searched for but never found in a man. How did I become like this? Of course, I know the answer, but for sure, I wasn't going to give away the recipe. Sweet. Seems I have become the 3% man in her eyes. And if you haven't read my book yet, you can read for free at understandingrelationships.com. And also my second book, Mastering Yourself, is available to read for free there. This is all about discovering your how to align your life with your true calling and reach your full potential. It's a purpose, self-reliance book. Both of them are free. Just got to go to understandingrelationships.com and sign up for the newsletter. Because once you do that, I know you'll be like, man, these books are good. Let me get the audiobook. Let me get the paperback so I can highlight and tab it out, make some notes in the margins and really get to know it. Or you get the Kindle version because you can kind of do the same thing with the Kindle. You can highlight things. You can make notes to really help make it a tool so you can focus on the parts that really 
apply to you the most so you can fill in all your knowledge gaps so this kind of stuff you never have to worry about going through these kinds of things but the reality is there's women are going to come along and they're going to test you on they're going to see what you're made of because the world is full of floppy cock beta males and every time i talk about beta male i usually get two or three beta males in the comments bitching and trying to convince me there's no such thing as a beta male and some scientists something about alphas wolves and what's Whatever. Everybody knows what an alpha male is and, an, and a beta male. People instinctively know what that is. The alpha is the leader. The beta is the follower. The alpha goes for what he wants. The beta shrinks from the challenges because he's a bitch. Don't be a bitch because women don't want a bitch. Women don't want a pussy because they already have one. I now feel bad for men that don't understand the female mind and treat their relationships as though they were in a Hollywood movie. Pure beta males. I do direct a few of those men to your work, but only those that deserve better. Not everybody makes the cut. This is like an NFL locker room. Only this is where the best hang out. So keep up the good work, Corey. It's changed my life. Well, congratulations to you, dude, and your sweet Russian girlfriend. I personally really like Russian women because they're feminine, they're strong-willed, they're confident, they go for what they want. They, they always let you know where you stand. And they don't fuck around, which I, I just, I like that. I like Russian women. So let's go to the second guy's email. He says, hey, Corey, I had one coaching call with you a while back and it changed my life. I had been following your work and was getting a lot of success and had a problem with a particular woman I was dating at the time. You pointed out many flaws in her and made me realize that although she was beautiful and fun and we got along great, she had flaky tendencies that I should watch out for and not get serious with unless I wanted long-term issues. Yeah, guys that are really care about a girl and their emotions are all wrapped up. And the, when I talk to them, because I have no emotional attachment to where they're, I'm just like, what's the bottom line here? What's she doing? What are you doing? What's she saying? What are you saying? And I can read between the lines. And when a guy's, because remember, we all make our decisions based on emotions and we use logic and reason to justify our decisions or our purchase decisions. And because he was in the thick of it and he really cared for this girl, he was completely ignoring all the red flags that were everywhere. It's some women you just can't have a healthy relationship with and some women you're just not compatible with. And that's okay. You want somebody who really wants to be with you. And not only do they really want to be with you, they make the effort. Their words and their actions match. And if they don't, she can go on down the fucking road. You pointed out that I was young, great career as a business owner and doctor, and my stock was only going to go up. After my call with you, I parted ways with her as friends, and she met a great guy who she is currently seeing. Yeah, she's now his problem. See how beautiful that is? One door closes, another one opens. Let her go, screw somebody else's life up. I began dating again, and it was well worth the money to save time and energy on this particular woman. She wasn't worth my valuable time anymore. Not long after, I continued to date and found an amazing woman. She was a former gymnast from Europe. Yeah, smoking hot body, he says. She is short, blonde, and we laughed con we laugh constantly. That's the most, that's so important. If you can't be with a girl that laughs at you and you laugh at her and you make fun of each other, it's going to be really difficult to be with them. You got to have a girl that's got a good attitude because life is so full of ups and downs and shit comes out of left field. Like when things are going well, just something happens. And if you got somebody in your life who can joke and laugh with you and, and feel good and have fun with, it's... It makes it so much better. If you got a chick that's a bitch and she just wants to be a bitch and she has been spoiled because she's hot and has been – her example is that she's allowed to get away with this because everybody kisses her ass. It's like, oh, man, you go through a difficult time and you got a, a girlfriend who just turns into a bitch. Whoo! It's great having all these tools in 3% man, but me personally is like, no way. I don't want to deal with any drama. No thank you. If she's not making it easy and effortless, she can go on down the fucking road. It's like, I know it's harsh, but I don't fucking care. Life's too short. I'm fucking 50, man. I've been around the block a few times. And nice girls who are nice to me, who are easygoing, easy to be with, who keep their word, and who are kind of jokesters and like to have fun, 
oh man, it's just this so nice. It's so refreshing. We connected immediately, and after five to six weeks, she brought up being together. That's like right out of the book. You know, book says right about week seven. We have been together ever since and got married two months ago. Damn, that was quick, dude. She is currently eight weeks pregnant. Got a trophy on the way. Nice. And life is great. If it wasn't for you, I would have continued to get hung up on the wrong women instead of letting things run their course and move on. Well, dude, I'm fucking proud of you. Congratulations on the baby. That is awesome. The 3% Club. Oh, and by the way, shameless plug, teespring.com, Coach Corey Wayne store. That's where you can get these and all the other mugs and the sweet shirts with the logo. Somebody said I look like a fucking superhero. It's just the logo. I don't like that superhero nonsense. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, guys. He says, I most likely would have messed things up with my wife as well as I used to over-pursue women I really liked in the past. Before you, I had success with women, but never the type of women I wanted, and my success wasn't reproducible. That's why it says winning the heart. Winning the heart of the woman of your dreams. Well, that's, that's the title. Learn pick up dating and relationship secrets that only 3% of the world's men know about being successful with women. Is it, the full title of the book is How to Be a 3% Man, Winning the Heart of the Woman of Your Dreams. I want you to be with somebody that knocks your socks off, not some mediocre average chick. He says, I can never understand why sometimes I was very successful and other times I couldn't get a woman to look at me for months. Now I know why after reading your book many times and booking a coaching session. Well worth the money. If you have time, I have only one question. I love to hunt an assortment of animals and fish as well. Oh, I bet the PETA people don't like you. These hobbies can take a lot of time, especially during October and November when whitetail are at peak hunting season. Well, like Uncle Ted Nugent says, it's like you got to call the herd because otherwise they just breed and they reproduce and they actually end up damaging their own ecosystems. So that's just, you know, nature's got to gotta run its course. There's... Some of the environmentalists have interfered with that. And some of these deer that have this tick, like in the, um, I guess it's the eastern, the mi middle east, middle east part of America. There's a you know deer that's like spreading these ticks that got some kind of disease all over the place. And it's starting to infect humans because, you know, there's no natural predators where they are. And they weren't, people weren't allowed to hunt them. So it creates problems. So I'm all for what uncle ted says uncle ted nugent when it comes to managing the population you just have to do it same thing with feral pigs you, you have to do it otherwise they just get out of control and they destroy everything she has mentioned a few times she doesn't want me disappearing all the time to leave her alone to hunt and fish she loves my passion for these hobbies but i can tell she is anxious about me disappearing for weeks to hunt or fish up until this point, I haven't gone a lot, but we'll start more now that me and my dad have some land to hunt, and we plan to head out west every year to Montana to hunt mule deer and antelope as well for about a week. I remember your videos saying that I need to keep my hobbies and passions and not give them up for any women, as that is masculine energy. Is that correct? Yep, you can't give these up. However, I'll get to that in a minute. I plan to do that, but what does that conversation look like when I'm leaving to get on a plane for a week and she's pregnant and not feeling well and she wants to cancel my trip? So you got to keep in mind, you got a pregnant woman at home. So maybe having a satellite phone and calling her once a day, don't just disappear for a week and not call and check on her at least. Take, you know, spend the money on her. If you can afford to hop on a plane and disappear in the woods for a week or two, because I know how expensive everything is. In the gun community because it's like oh man it's like tens of thousands of dollars and then you get into night vision and putting fucking lasers on your guns like shit is so expensive it's such an expensive hobby so if you can afford to fly and hunt deer for a week you can afford to buy a satellite phone when you're out in the middle of nowhere and call your queen maybe in the morning or at night, just to check on her and make sure she's okay. You can't just disappear like that for a week or two. 
you got to figure that out. Take some extra phone, cell phone batteries or whatever. Take the battery out of the phone. Have it available in case you want to call. Put on a vibrator or something. I mean, you got to figure it out. You can't just disappear for a week or two when your when your bride is pregnant. That's not cool. That's going to cause her to not feel safe and comfortable because she wants you to know that you're there. And maybe go on a hunting trip for a week at a time and then come back. And then a few weeks later, go back again. But I'd say invest in a satellite phone. You know, and like I said, if you're spending all this money to do this stuff, you can afford a sat phone. What do I say when she wants to stay in and all I want to do is run to the woods after work or weekends to chase whitetail a few months a year? Well, a man does what he must. He must go chase the whitetail, but you got to look out for her. You got to, you know, if she, if you're checking up on her, because think about it. If you call her, maybe a, something comes up with the pregnancy and she ends up in the hospital. So your wife and your baby are in the hospital because something's going sideways and you, you find this out because you got a sat phone or she calls you and tells you. What are you going to do? Oh, yeah, I'll see you in a week when I get back. You're like, no, you're going to fucking, it's an emergency and you're going to go back and hop on a plane to go be with your queen. That's what she's worried about. She's worried about something happening. You're her rock. You're her mountain. She needs to be able to get in touch with you. And so you're a phone call and a plane ride away if there's an emergency. I don't want to hurt her, but I want to set the stage that these are my passions and I plan to continue them my entire life. Any help would be great. Thanks again for what you do. Like I said, sat phone, and let, let her know. It's like if something happens, like I'll be on the next plane back, babe. I got you. But the nature's calling. I got to spend time with my dad. We plan. We spent the money. You just got to figure it out. You got to communicate, but you can't give it up. But you also can't just abandon her and disappear for two weeks at a time. And no phone call, no nothing. So he says, P.S. I booked a coaching session with a YouTube therapist who claims to do what you do two weeks before I talk to you. Often imitated but never duplicated, my friend. Notice what he says next about my coaching. He was half the price and had many degrees in psychology. Well, the stuff that's taught in 3% Man, self-help, self-reliance, and mastering yourself, it's like these are just not things that are part of a psychologist or a therapist wheelhouse. Good ones study and learn my work, and this gives them a lot of great tools for their toolbox because I've coached some of the most successful psychologists and marriage and couples, family couples therapists from all over the world. And the really good ones will learn from a guy like me and incorporate that into their practice, and, you know, and they just smoke everybody. They just blow everybody else away and their capabilities and their clients get amazing results like mine do. I mean, go read the reviews on Amazon or anywhere else. Google my name and go look at the chat rooms and what people say about me. It's like my work, the results speak for itself. That's why I can give my books away for free because I know once you see how well they work, you'll go buy the audiobook, the paperback, the hardcover. You know, and it's, we're approaching Christmas time in a few months, so these make great gifts. The hardcover, I know they're a little pricey, but you know they're print on demand, so they're really expensive to produce. But if you got somebody you care about, or maybe yourself, the hardcover or the paperback version makes a great gift, a great stocking stuffer for those you care about. Although he was a nice guy, the psychologist they hired, I got 100 times the value from your sessions versus his. What's up? You really do get what you pay for. Amen to that, brother. So if you're having a challenge and you, whether it's your personal life or your professional life, and you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I'll see you in the 3% Club.